So we've come to Tunnel Barn Farm today in uh, Warwickshire, and as many of you all know, it's a bagging mecca. Um, mainly consists of F1s, um, and we've come up today onto High Pool uh, to demonstrate really how to catch fish in a speed fishing scenario. So we're talking, you know, we're doing weights of upwards of 100 pounds, but you might have well over 100 fish to do that. And the key thing that I wanted to sort of get across today was it's not just about feeding and the rigs that you use to catch these fish, fish quickly. It's actually how you set your gear up around you. Now, if you take into consideration that you might be catching two or 300 fish during that five hour period, it's very important that everything that is set up around you is easy to, to obviously fish with. So your top kits are very close to you, your bait's very close to you. Again, your pole, everything's set up perfectly around you because those seconds in the match that you might save over the course of five hours will obviously increase your weight. And that's, let's face it, that is the, at the end of the game. We're wanting to win and we're wanting to beat our, the anglers around us. So first point, and I find it very, very important, is to use a large side tray. Now, what this enables me to do is have it set up so that my bait is right next to my hand. As you'll notice, I have it set as high as I can on my, on my box leg so that it's very easy for me to get my hand into my bait tub and feed my pellets. So in a match scenario, if I'm fishing, I can feed and literally my hand's there again and I can feed again. I don't even have to look at my side tray to see where the pellets are. It's literally just instinctive because it's there. Again, using a nice big bait tub as well like I've got here because then I'm not rooting around trying to get my hands into a small tub. Um, another, point, another point that I have is I have all my um, top kits neatly laid out here so that I can in instantly recognize which one I need to use to go across or my shallow rig or my close rig. So again, it just speeds the whole, the whole fishing experience up. Um, again, my net's very close to hand so that I can, when I'm netting fish, it's there, slip it out, unhook the fish and drop it straight back down. Now I use a pole sock. One of the main reasons for this, obviously, it's not windy today, but I like to have it there even when it's not windy so that my pole is in the same position at all times. This enables me to ship in and out very quickly without even having to look when I'm shipping back out where my pole is. I can literally pop my hand down and I know it's gonna be there every single time. A very, very important part of uh, speed fishing is your pole roller and how you actually have this set up. Now, a lot of people I see on the bank have the pole rollers set up very, very low. Now, what this obviously means that you have to do is when you're shipping in and out, you're having to pick the pole up to put it across your knee before you, before you actually start fishing. So what I like to have is my pole roller set up so that basically it's at the right height for when I'm shipping out, it's straight across my knees. So it might only save two or three seconds, but again, it's two or three seconds that I'm saving over one of my competitors. Get a nice big pole roller like we've got there with the Mark double V roller allows me to not have to worry about shipping back in a certain uh, position. I'll show you how to catch some fish now. So I'm going to quickly talk you through what I would say is one of the most revolutionary pieces of kit that I've used um, for this style of fishing anyway over the last sort of two years. Um, I started using them in the prototype stage a couple of years ago and I've never really looked back and that's the F1 shallow kits that we produce at MAP. Now the main advantages to these kits is not only the fact that they're six foot long, but this aids massively when you're netting your fish. As you'll know when you're playing fish on a short rod they come up a lot closer in and it's exactly the same principle with a top kit. So by fishing this obviously six foot um, top kit, it means when I'm actually going to net a fish, they come up right in front of me. So again, just aids the speed element of this style of fishing. Not only that, because it's only six foot long, I'm only using maybe what, just short of six foot of elastic. Now this enables me to fish a really light elastic, especially when I'm fishing for these smaller fish, F1s and speed fishing. You need something that when, the, when the, obviously the you hit your bite, the elastic comes out very quickly and very smoothly. But because there's only a small amount of elastic running through the top kit, it means that I'm not having to strip loads of elastic like you would do in a standard top kit. Again, so when I lift up to, hook, uh, to net a fish, I'm literally lifting up and the fish comes straight to the top. Um, we'll move on quickly to the rigs then. So for today, I'm going to be fishing shallow. This for me is the easiest and most efficient way of catching large weights of small fish, especially on high pool. Um, with it being so deep down the middle, you just cannot beat shallow fishing on here. Um, key point, as I've probably mentioned in other videos before, is the Dacron connector. 
this just prevents your line from flicking over the top of your pole tip and getting caught up. Then I like to fish, especially when feed, uh, speed fishing, a short length, my main line of 017 um, Power Optex. Uh, the reason for doing this is basically to prevent the, the rig from tangling. The, the, the fish aren't going to look at your main line, they're just looking at your hook length. So by fishing a really durable and, and stiffer uh, main line, it means I can flick my rig over the top without having to worry when I'm shipping in and out and slapping the rig that it's going to tangle up. And then I fish an 011 hook length. Um, again, like I said, the only part that the fish are actually going to see is the hook length. And I, do, I am a firm believer in using light hook lengths. I really do think it massively improves your fish catching ratio. Um, we've got a MAP MSF3. That's a 4B8, but because it's a P float, it takes a hell of a lot of shot. Um, and again, I like to use this rig as almost like a bolt rig. So when you're slapping it over, because you've got a lot of shot there, there's actually six number eights there, and that's a 4B8 uh, float. But what that allows me to do is hold a really tight line to my, to my rig. So as soon as, I, as soon as a fish picks that, picks that pellet up, I don't even need to strike, it just pulls my elastic out instantly. And then, as you'll be aware, I'm a massive believer in fishing lassoes. And this is a huge benefit when you're, when you're fishing, uh, speed fishing, because I'm not having to change my pellet all the time. I can comfortably catch 20 fish, providing you're using the right pellet without having to change it. And this is obviously massively aided now by the lasso tool that we do with MAP. Again, just speeding up things, rather than having to pick up two, two baiting needles to open it up, I literally have to pick one object up and straight away I can open it, tighten the lasso and we're fishing again. And then this moves me nicely onto the final key element, I would say, which is your landing net. Now, not a lot of people would say that your landing net makes a massive difference, but it, trust me, it really, really does. Um, again, map net, silverfish landing net. Now, to, a couple of points to notice with this net is it's a very, very fine uh, mesh. Now, this prevents your pellet from going through the mesh and you're snapping your lasso constantly. It is imperative when you're fishing lassoes. Trust me, if you fish a net with, wider get, with a wider mesh, you'll be forever snapping them. Secondly, you'll notice that it's a shallow base net. Now, the, the benefits of this when you're catching small fish is you're not having to dive down and the fish isn't wriggling all over the place. It literally allows me to put my hand in, pick the fish up straight away, unhook it and drop it in the net. Right, so I've been feeding my swim now for about 20 minutes. There seems to be a few fish there. There's plenty of swirls. So I'll get out and briefly show you how to approach fishing shallow for these ravenous piranhas. So literally, ship out, as you might notice, I've got some tape on my pole. This allows me to ship out to the same point every single time, so I can be very accurate with where I'm fishing. And, it just, and again, it enables with the speed element that we're talking about. I'm not having to look along my pole to, to a certain area. Literally, once you're out, slap your rig once. Oh, and there we go, we've got one on instantly. You know, it's going to be, it's probably going to be difficult today. Um, and that, again, like I was saying about the net, easy to get hold of, nice and shallow, can get the fish out, unhook it, and pop it into my keep net. Again, you'll see my nets, my keep nets are very close to me, in front of me, so I'm not having to worry about stretching out to pop any fish. Can't miss the fish with my, uh, with the keep nets being like spaced like they are in front of me as well. Back out we go, ship to the piece of tape, flick the rig over. Oh, there we go, there's another one. As you'll notice, every time, as soon as I go out, I'll just feed some pellets. Again, like I was talking about with the pole roller and the sock, she keeps my pole in the right position every single time. Unhook this fish, drop him in the net, pop your landing net down, and then if you need to, simply feed some bait. Again, very close to you, all to hand. Flick your rig out. And let's catch a piranha. Slap your rig over again. Oh, missed one that time. Self-releasing, there we go, there's another one. Feed, you'll notice every time I hook a fish, I'm feeding approximately 10 to 15 pellets, and I'll feed that in a match scenario, I'd keep feeding that all the time. Um, obviously today, as I said, we're only fishing for around about, you know, 12 to 14 ounces, so I don't need to feed as heavily. It's what you might call solid. It's 
what we refer to at MAP as an Andy May, Andy May peg. And there we go, there's another one. I mean, you, you honestly can't get any quicker than this. Again, roller, all set up correctly behind me. I'm not even having to look when I'm shipping it back. Net my fish, straight in. It's a beautiful little F1. Oh. Just need his big brother now. Again, feed. Doesn't get any simpler than this, it really doesn't. And I know obviously we're pleasure fishing today, but even in a match scenario, you can have days like this. And when you do, you just mess your rig up like I just have and frustrate everyone. Oh, and there we go, there's another one on. So, I mean, you honestly can't get any quicker than this. And like I said to you, it's, it's not just about um, the feeding and the rigs that you're using. It's about being efficient with everything that you have set up around you. So you'll see everything that I do, I know exactly where everything is. You know, just because I have it set up this way doesn't mean that that suits you, but just find a way that, that you're comfortable with having all your gear set up around you. And trust me, it will massively, massively aid you when, you, when you're catching fish at this sort of speed. There you go guys, I think we'll call it a day with this one. I just hope it goes to show that having all your gear set up around you correctly and having the right terminal tackle can really aid you when you're catching big weights very quickly.